Greetings programs, greetings wizards, adventurers. Today we'll be going over the DMO Explosive Blast speed build. Surprisingly, yes, there is a speed build. <laughs> uh, be going in over skills and items, and then we'll get into um, affixes, uh, gearing, and some alternate options as well. DMO EB actually rivals uh, the Tal Meteor setup for solo speeds, which is very exciting. Uh, hadn't been able to find anything other than Tal Meteor that was that efficient, that defensive, uh, that fun to play for a solo speed. So this gives you another option to uh, grind Paragon with. Question is, uh, is this better than? Tal Explosive Blast, so Tal Russia Explosive Blast for speeds. Yes, I believe it is. Um, the downside, of course, is having to cast your slow time when you're going through the rift to affect enemies. It does slow down the, the speed of the build, but you're able to push higher due to all the increased multipliers that you're able to fit in due to the different configuration of the set itself you're able to slot different skills. So with Tal Rasha, you're sort of constrained on the elements, and that puts a different uh, sort of um, bind on the build itself. Whereas this, you are able to uh, put additional movement and you know maybe some extra multipliers in there and be more comfortable. So for this build, we're using the DMO set, which requires you to affect enemies with your slow time to deal increased damage to them. That's going to slow down the build a little bit as far as speed goes, but as you'll see, you can still get some pretty good four to six minute clears with this build. The main benefit to going this set over Tal Rasha is the fact that you can get a higher, both a higher set bonus and you can fit higher multiplier in, which means you can clear a higher greater rift even though it's slightly slower yeah, up to maybe one minute slower you are clearing at a higher GR and that's the main benefit here so it's a 3800% damage bonus from the set you're also able because of the configuration of the items able to take advantage of the endless walk one of the huge advantages of this build Other multipliers, of course, were including Death Wish, Wild Channeling, get increased damage, Wanda Woe, extra blasts when you cast your explosive blast. We're using the Chain Reaction Rune, which gives us three explosions, three additional blasts here, so you get, I think, 12 in total. Then we have uh, per cast, that is. And then we have the Etch Sigil, which on top of your manually cast explosive blast casts while you're channeling will also cast your spenders. Note we also have black hole in this build so whenever it comes off cooldown according to Edge Sigil it will get randomly cast as well but this provides some neat mechanics for the build. It provides a pull so you're able to group enemies especially elites ranged elites like to disperse having the the pull is nice to have here. It does detract a little bit from the amount of blasts that you would be able to get out with your edge sigil, but it more than makes up for it because the rune we're using is spell steel. So spell steel will give us extra damage depending on how many enemies you hit. So higher density gives you higher damage. It's quite a nice addition to the build. Um, so this particular build you're going to be running around your endless walk will typically be at or near 50, and then you'll find a target, usually an elite or a high progression group of enemies. Then you're going to post up, use your slow time, start channeling. This will cast the black hole, pull in enemies, and you'll be able to start doing a lot of damage. Notice when I started to stand still and channel, my Tavik started to ramp up as well. So as you are standing still, your your damage is increasing very rapidly, as you could imagine. 
Uh, Tiguk, of course, additive damage, but it is quite significant amount of additive damage. Also gives us a nice armor buff uh, when it's up. So while you're <laughs> standing around channeling, you'll have an easier time doing that. Uh, other multipliers, Audacity, we're using, let's see, uh, we're also using a lot of elite damage in this build. We have the elite damage from Bane of the Powerful, elite damage from Unity, so that's a, quite a boon, especially because we're engaging elites fairly often with this build. Like I said, it's kind of, you're, you're seeking out those higher density areas, and most, most of the time you will try to group up elites, or near a pylon. Uh, speaking of pylons, when you get near a pylon, cast your slow time on the pylon first. This is because we are using the exhaustion rune, which will decrease the damage enemies deal that are affected by slow time. So if the slow time is over the pylon, when you click the pylon, if a bunch of Lukuni slashers or fast attacking horde elite pack comes out, it, you won't get such tremendous da incoming damage. And um, to combat all of that incoming damage, we have a lot of defense in this build. So you have the set bonus, 4 piece set, get 60%, you get 50% from the double unity, don't forget the token on your follower as well. Uh, we are using, let's see, the storm armor in combination with the halo of Karini. Gives us 80% as long as it's up uh, and running. We're using mantle of channeling. This also gives uh, another multiplier, forgot about that multiplier, 25%, but it also gives you defense while channeling. We have the Arcane Torrent giving us a Flame Ward defensive bonus, 15 to 25%, depending on how long we've been channeling. So quite a tanky setup once you're standing around and actually dealing damage. Now to get in between packs, we have a lot of mobility in this build. We have the Illusionist, of course. Since we're rotating our slow time and our teleport quite often, this comes in mighty handy, as you can imagine. Scramble, uh, as we get hit, we get a movement speed bonus. This is, comes in useful for picking up orbs, uh, especially, or dodging uh, ranged attacks, that sort of thing, or ranged wrists in general when you get hit by all those little arrows and projectiles that won't necessarily kill you you will get the movement speed bonus to move quicker through the rift. Typically those are rifts that you can't get much benefit from, so this comes in very handy. Because we're going unity here, this gives us enough defense to slot the wormhole rune. So usually in this sort of setup you would go safe passage for the extra defense, this particular build for speed, I found Wormhole to be very useful. It's that double, the ability to recast your teleport within three seconds. So you can either use it like I just did, or you can use it as like a double hop, a quick double hop if you want. Either way, just depends on the situation, I think. Other uh, other uses, typically on the Rift Guardian, I will do this. You're up close to the Rift Guardian, and your Storm Armor will uh, your sorry, halo of Karini will be up and you're channeling but if you're close to the the single tardy rift guardian this bonus will go down so you can use the wormhole to jump back out your storm armor will hit the rift guardian and then you can again whoop, I didn't I waited too long there but you can do something like this where your storm armor hits refreshes the halo of Karini buff and then you're dealing damage to the RG once again at full defensive bonus. Now let's see, there's another cool interaction, uh, Halo of Karini, the reason we're going with this particular item is it does allow us to slot the Nim Nemesis Bracers, gives us that extra progression during the rift, very useful indeed. Um, let's see, as far as mobility as well, another cool tip you can do is right after you kill an elite or whatever group of density you are engaging, I typically will simply cast my slow time. This will give you that extra movement speed from the illusionist bonus. You'll be able to scoop up all the orbs, especially if you have low pickup radius. This is helpful. And then after that, you can use your teleport to seek out the next pack. And also try and use them in rotation. So if you've, this refreshes your defensive bonus as well. 
you're able to then use this, but once you see it came off cooldown again, your illusionist bonus would have faded from teleport at that point, and you can sort of juggle them to help get through the rift quicker. As far as resource is concerned, we're using um, APOC on source. I guess that's an affix, but it's kind of important uh, that you have that. Um, we're using the Herd Brashes Binding Belt. This will get you, uh, I'd say try and get at least a 58 plus would be good uh, on, the, on the legendary roll. But really, if you just get a well-rolled one that's ancient, it should work just fine. Uh, for the build, that's pretty much all you have to have to have for resource in this setup, which is quite nice indeed. It means you can focus, I guess we're transitioning more into affixes now, where you can focus more on cooldowns. So uh, let's take a look at what cooldown we have in the build itself. We have evocation for the extra 20%. We got paragon, of course. Uh, forgot about resource. We also have the 10% from paragon resource. Um, Diamond in the helmet, uh, shoulders, gloves, at least one of your rings, your source, for sure. Um, if your weapon doesn't happen to roll with cooldown like mine didn't, you can make do and roll it on your unity. Uh, you can roll both your unity and your Wandawo with, or your death wish with cooldown. So you can roll all those items with cooldown to get even higher cooldown, up to 62 point. 6% I believe uh, which would be very good for the build indeed you can also there's the option here you can just run with a unity that is increased damage from release and crit crit so instead of the cooldown you roll crit hit damage and that would be a very favorable affix as well so there makes it easier to find an ancient unity with good rolls on it that's something you can adjust in the build to easily fit this in. I would say though, you definitely want to try to limit the number of pieces that are missing cooldown. So uh, I'd say more than one piece and you're starting to get in trouble. That's for sure. So higher than 55% cooldown is my recommendation. And uh, let's see, what other affixes do we have? We have explosive blast damage. You're gonna want it on chest and on your shoulder piece. There is the option here for area damage instead of vitality on the shoulder piece, uh, but area damage still doesn't affect the extra blasts that are proc from Woe, so its use is very limited, especially for a speed build, so I prefer to run vitality. Just know that if you're going to put area damage anywhere, you could put it where the vitality is on your shoulder. Um, you know what? Definitely want some form of life per hit in this build. It helps out tremendously in combination with all that defense to keep you up and running. Uh, some form of restoration. I prefer to have it for this particular build on the bracer, but you could put it on the weapon as well. Either place is good. Uh, just whatever you happen to find or manage to get. Of course, I'm going to prefer, since I got a pretty good weapon here that didn't have it, I'm going to prefer to put that here if I can. Uh, fire percent you're going to want on your bracer of course and on your um, amulet crit crit hit damage standard rolls wherever you can put them gloves of course amulet crit on the edge sigil crit crit wherever possible especially on the compass rose my compass rose is missing crit hit chance so I would prefer vitality to be crit hit chance and that would be a better uh, ring preferred for this build so is to have at least two pieces of secondary reduces duration of control impairing effects this is because three is better Th three pieces would be better you can get this affix on jewelry I believe and on your helmet so look out for that affix it is highly desirable simply because you're getting hit with um, nightmarish uh, anything that can reduce the duration of getting frozen, that sort of thing, is very nice for this build, particularly because we are not slotting the Invigorating Gemstone. Um, the Meteor build, we've run with the Invigorating Gemstone instead of the Powerful Gem, because it removes the... gives you crowd control immunity, which is very, very handy for that particular build. 
because when you're channeling and the meteors come down, there's a delay, right? It's very useful to have this because you know that in between the time that you sent a meteor down and it lands, you're still going to be channeling to get that dynamic bonus from Death Wish and uh, the Etch Sigil and all of that. So this comes in really handy for a meteor build, but isn't as necessary for explosive blast because we're attacking all the time basically now. <laughs> and it's it's like a machine gun effect you're constantly dealing damage so the powerful gym makes more sense in this situation also gives that nice multiplicative damage bonus gives us a higher potential to greater rift clear quite nice uh... trapped of course another one of our multipliers let's move on to alternate skills and items so uh... if you want to clear a little bit higher something you could do is swap out your Bane of the Powerful, and you might just be clearing a little bit higher so that you can do gem ups, like uh, get gems for augments that are a little bit higher than your speed speed runs would be. You can swap out your Bane of the Powerful for Stricken, put Stricken in, Stricken of course giving you that increased damage, stacking damage to help kill that Rift Guardian faster. I was able to clear at least five Greater Rifts higher with the similar build. The only other thing I swapped out was Wormhole for Safe Passage. You will move slower through the rift, but I was still able to get some pretty consistent, you know, six to eight minute clears, even with the swapped out and at the higher greater rift. A couple of other options. Uh, we are running with the Fire Rune here, mostly because it has more smaller attacks, which ends up being better uh, through the rift on a speed run. Um, but if you happen to find some good lightning bracers, a good lightning amulet, you can instead run the speed build with the flash rune. Now, flash will require more resource. This, of course, being on autocast, so you're going to want to use numlock or some variation thereof to keep this cast while you're in the rift channel to Crocker Edge Sigil as well as the manual cast to get all of those blasts in. Now as you can see my Arc Impero is going down significantly when I have the Lightning Rune equipped. So to combat that you're going to need to swap off the Scramble Rune and into the Power of the Storm Rune which would reduce the Arcane Power cost of your skills and let you run that Lightning Rune. But if you happen to have a Lightning, lightning Bracer, a Lightning Amulet, it's just a very convenient way to still be able to run the build but maybe not quite as optimally now another quick swap you could make is continuing on the theme of lightning you could use a different rune on black hole so you could go the super massive rune which would give you that larger pull with the black hole you could also if you wanted to you could run event horizon to suck in those elite monster affixes personally though um, those two options, I think, are for maybe running slightly lower GRs. So instead of running 80, 89s, 90s, you would be running maybe 87s, and you could run with the, the the different rune, that sort of thing. That's all for this build. I hope you've enjoyed this guide. As always, give me a like or subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the rifts. Stay tuned for some more footage.